Go back the way you came. Uh, my beloved, there may be a time in the life of the believer when they may ask themselves, how did I get where I am today? How in the world did I get in this mess? Hmm? Uh, it is because many times we allow the circumstances of life to eclipse the face and the presence of God in our life. Sometimes your circumstances can be so big until you lose sight of God in the situation. Hmm? Instead of you acknowledging and understanding that God is in the situation with you and there's no situation that you can be in that God's not there already, many times we allow the circumstance uh, to eclipse the face of God and the presence of God in our lives. When that happens, we begin to suffer. Hmm? I want you to pay attention this morning because I'm going to share with you some of the problems that we are having in the church and I'm going to share with you some of the problems that you're having right now. Hmm? So when this happens, we begin to suffer from spiritual depression. Do you hear me, somebody? Yeah. Um, when we suffer from spiritual depression, uh, we are out of the will of God. I need you to hear me this morning because many churches, many members are sitting in churches all over the world today and many of them that are not in church and have not been to church, the reason that they have not been there is because they're at home suffering from spiritual depression. Let me work a little while and I'll get out of your way. So when we suffer from spiritual depression, again, we're out of the will of God. And uh, when we suffer, uh, when we are spiritually depressed, we begin to dry up spiritually, huh? And waste our time and life. You know any dried up Christians? I'm going to preach it for you this morning. I'm going to make it real plain. You, you know any dried up Christians? You, you know any Christians that used to be on fire for the Lord? Hmm? And now they can't even grunt? Hmm? Amen. Well, the, the, there's a reason for that. They are suffering from and they have succumbed to spiritual uh, depression. Amen. And so uh, as a result of that, uh, we are physically and emotionally drained. And that's what it means to be spiritually depressed. Amen. Uh, we focus on our circumstances rather than on who our God is. Uh, and so we got the picture confused, amen? And sometimes you, your problem or your circumstance can be so big until it just overpowers you and takes up all of your time in life. And that, that's what causes us to be spiritually depressed, amen? And so uh, when we're spiritually depressed, God's revival suffers. There cannot be a revival within the church. There cannot be a revival in the person because of spiritual depression. Amen? And not only that, Satan and the enemies of God are delighted hmm, uh, that uh, fellow believers become discouraged. They're just delighted. Huh? You're talking about giving, giving Satan the victory. All he has to do is see uh, the spiritual depression among God's people. And he starts jumping up and down and laughing, clapping his hands. Amen? Uh, uh, when we are spiritually depressed, we abandon the promises of God. Talk to me, somebody. Hmm? And then when we become spiritually depressed, we are prevented from meeting and mastering our responsibilities to God. Do you know that when God saved you, he gave you a responsibility? He gave you uh, something to do for him? In his service, amen. Uh, and, and that's for every saved person, amen. And so when we're spiritually depressed, we cannot meet his responsibilities, amen. We cannot master what we're supposed to be mastering for him because what we are dealing with is mastering us, amen. And so uh, many believers think that they are alone when they're spiritually depressed, but they're not alone. You feel alone. Hmm? Uh, we just go home from church and sit down and stop going. Don't go back no more. Get out. Get out of the ministry. Don't do nothing, huh? And he, even go all the way down to if you got money, if you got an offer, you stop doing that too. Don't send that either. Hmm? Spiritual depression. Hmm? Sometimes in life, in the life of believers, we feel alone, especially when we are surrounded by. Watch this, unbelievers. First of all, you outnumber. <laughs> You're a believer, you're saved, and you're surrounded by unbelievers. You're outnumbered. I'm going to leave you alone in here. Amen? 
And, and, and so um, there are times when we may feel that we're the only ones on earth still standing for Christ. Hmm? Only somebody still lifting up the blood stained banner. Only, only somebody still trying to serve. Amen. Many times we end up in a place where we never thought we would be. Spiritual depression. Mm -hmm. hmm? Won't you watch that? So in the text here, uh, the prophet Elijah. And I'm going to show you how, how spiritual uh, depression can come on. The prophet Elijah found himself spiritually depressed. Hmm? Despite the great things that he had accomplished for God, he was spiritually depressed, and his life seemed to be moving in a downward path instead of an upward path. You know what got him depressed? I'm telling you what got him depressed. He, he had worked a mighty miracle through God on Mount Carmel. Mm -hmm. Between God and Satan. Talk to me, somebody. Mm -hmm. Amen. And uh, King Ahab yeah. uh -huh. huh, uh, saw what he had done, what God had done through him, and he told his wife by the name of Queen Jezebel. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and, and what Queen Jezebel said, she sent a message to Elijah. Uh -huh. yeah. Go tell him that since he has killed all of the prophets of Baal, Hmm? Oh yeah, e Elijah was a bad boy. Yeah. Uh -huh. huh? A anything that wasn't godly, anything that wasn't attached to God, huh? God gave him the power and the authority to shut it down, yeah. Yeah. and he shut it down on Mount Carmel. Yeah. Uh -huh. hmm? and, 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 and and was a great swordsman, mm -hmm. huh? Killed up a whole bunch of folks for God, uh -huh. hmm? a whole bunch of demons, a whole bunch of devils. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. And so Queen Jezebel sent word to him. Says, "Sis, you have torn down the altar of Baal." And since you have killed all Baal's prophets, huh, I'm going to take your life before the sun go down. <laughs> Elijah took off running. Spiritual depression. Huh? Listen, you got some bullies in the, in the church. Get up in your face and swell all up. Huh? And because you can't defend, you get scared. All of a sudden, now you're spiritually depressed. Well, I got to take me a Sunday off. <laughs> Laugh all you want. I'm just telling you what you're dealing with. Yeah. Huh? Instead, of, instead of making sure you write back that next Sunday, say, now what else you got? All right. <laughs> so <laughs> he was spiritually depressed, and his Christian life, instead of going upward, it was going down. That's what depression, spiritual depression will do for you, amen? And so God had wrought a mighty miracle through Elijah on Mount Carmel. Uh, God had brought rain uh, through his prophecy, amen? God had, uh, Elijah had killed all of the false prophets, uh, and the people of God had begun to turn back to God. That's what Jezebel was so upset about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's why she wanted to take Elijah's life. You'll find that in the scripture. Look, look on, 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 the, uh, on the Facebook site. Queen Jezebel, the wife of King Ahab, swore hmm, uh, that she would have him killed uh, uh, for his ministry. Do you hear me, somebody? Yeah. Did you catch that? I, I said getting killed for your ministry. Yeah. I want you to catch that, huh? A yeah. whole lot of folks uh, uh, got killed for their ministry, huh? And they ended up being spiritually depressed, yeah. huh? God gave them the voice to sing like a mockingbird, huh? Yeah. But somebody told them they was tired of him yeah. hmm, and stopped singing. Huh? Kill your ministry. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Hmm? And, 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 and so as a result of that, uh, he took off running. Amen. Uh, and, and, and he went into a state of spiritual depression and felt that it was time for him to run for his life. Uh -huh. There are a whole lot of folks. The reason they're not at church this morning, the reason they have stopped coming, they're on the run for their life. Uh -huh. hmm? They're spiritually depressed and they're on the run. Why? Because they didn't ring up heaven. Mm -hmm. And so as a result of that, God is able to fight your battle, amen. And so he thought that uh, he could get out of the reach of Jezebel. First of all, look at what he was running from. Yeah. He wasn't running from nothing. He was running from a woman. <laughs> now, good thing if he had been running from God, right. but he was running from a, from a woman, right. and a woman that didn't believe in Jehovah God. Yeah. Do you hear me, somebody? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can do the same thing. We can allow unsaved folks to put us on the run. Uh -huh. Okay. Just because everybody's at church don't mean they're saved. Right. 
Hmm? And so uh, uh, he, he, he thought that he could get out of the reach of Jezebel, but uh, the devil will go to any ex extent to destroy a servant of God. If Satan can get you on the run, he got you. Hmm? And he, he'll run you all the way down in the ground. Run you back home and you will never come out the house no more. Hmm? In lockdown. Satan got a whole lot of folks in lockdown today. Hmm? And, and, but they got an excuse why they can't and why they don't. They're in lockdown. Hmm? The excuse sound good, but I can tell you what's behind the excuse. What's behind the excuse is Satan. Amen? And so the only way to escape the reach of the devil huh, is to go to heaven. Did you hear that? The only way you're going to escape the reach of Satan is go to heaven. Now, to go to heaven, you've got to make preparation. <laughs> and so Elijah uh, carried with him the gloomy thoughts. Watch this right here. And the spiritual depression. The, those gloomy thoughts that just kept uh, coming up again. Hmm? The guilt trip just kept coming up again. What happened to him? Uh, what, Je uh, what Jezebel said to him? Uh, what he thought was going to happen to him just kept coming up again. Amen. Those gloomy thoughts and the spiritual de depression. And then uh, he did what a whole lot of us do. Watch this. He had a pity party. Come on, man. We have a pity party. Listen, you've been you done missed church for a whole month, two months. Somebody called you on the phone. And, 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 and they're trying to find out what's the problem and blah, blah. And what, what do, we, do you want to have? First of all, before you get to the problem, I got to have my pity party. Hmm? So he had a pity party here. Uh, uh, and he had a pity party on himself. Uh, he ceased to be able to think rationally. When you're having a pity party and when you're in spiritual depression, no, you don't think rationally. You think irrationally. Amen? And as he ran, he left his servant and went a day's journey into the wilderness and sat down under a juniper tree mm -hmm. and requested for himself that he might die. Yeah. Just, Lord, just end it all. I, I just don't even want to live no more. I don't even want to be your prophet. Yeah. Just, just end it. Hmm? Spiritual depression. Amen. Uh, that he wanted to die. He told the Lord that he had had enough. Amen. And then asked God to take his life. Uh, Do you hear me somebody? That's pretty bad off, isn't it? Uh, God does not accept resignation, saints. All right. <laughs> So for all of the folks that went home and sat down, for all of the folks that used to serve in the church and used to work in the church, dial those seven numbers and tell them. If you're scared to tell them, tell them pastor said. <laughs> Y'all like to do that anyway. <laughs> tell them pastor said God does not accept resignations. I need you to hear that, amen? So if you've been trying to hand God a, your resignation yeah. and it seems like he hasn't taken it yet, that is because he does not accept resignations, amen? Elijah did a rational thing while he was having his pity party and suffered from spiritual depression. He laid down huh, and went to sleep. That's a sure sign of spiritual depression. Uh -huh. Huh? Yeah, I, listen, just go lay down and go to sleep. I don't want to be bothered. Put the phone on mute or whatever. Uh -huh. I don't even want to hear the phone ring. I'm depressed. Uh -huh. huh? He, 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 he uh, uh, laid down and went to sleep. But while he slept, yeah. hmm, God prepared uh, to feed him and give him some water to drink. Amen. The yeah. scriptures say he laid down and went to sleep and God sent an angel. Yeah. Hmm? Uh -huh. Now, now, now at, at, at that juncture, you have to pay attention when God is working. Some of us, when we're de spiritually depressed, we don't even want to hear from an angel. <laughs> God, the Bible said God sent an angel, it was the angel of the Lord, to touch him and to speak to him. And the angel told him to arise and eat. Hmm? Uh, do you do know that spiritual depression can make you lose your appetite, don't you? Huh? Arise and eat. And he looked and behold, at his head, God had provided a bread cake uh, on some hot stones and a jar of water. Do you hear me, somebody? The Lord just showed up, huh? And the Lord be, uh, was his chef, if you please, and cooked him something to eat and, and, and a, a, a jar of water, amen? Yeah. Elijah ate and drank, and then he laid back down. That's showing up spiritually depressed right there, huh? huh? Yeah, ate what the Lord provided for him, then laid right on back down. You, you're depressed. <laughs> he laid back down, and so God sent the angel of the Lord to him again and touched him again, amen? God is persistent, saints. Huh? You, listen, if you want to get on bad terms with God, let God try to talk to you and you don't want to be bothered. Please do that. 
Hmm? Listen, you can't sleep at night. Your food don't taste good. Uh, look like everybody your enemy. <laughs> you got them quick, short asses. You don't want to be bothered. You, you, you know how people like when they're upset, don't you? Huh? Any other time they answer you, they entertain you. When they're upset, they got a little short answer, and that's all. Hmm? Oh, yeah. So you have to pay attention. So the Lord sent the angel back to him again and told him to arise and uh, eat, amen, because the journey that was before him was too great for him. In other words, God is going to send you somewhere. Uh, he still got something else for you to do, amen. Elijah arose and he ate and he drank and he went in the strength of that food. Watch this right here. 40 days and 40 nights. You mean to tell me God can fix you a meal from heaven? and give you some water from heaven and you eat it and drink it one time and you can go in the strength of that meal 40 days and 40 nights? Do you hear me, somebody? That, that's how God operates, amen? So he went in the strength of that meal for 40 days and 40 nights, amen? And until he arrived at the mountain of God, amen? God was bringing him back to him, amen? God provided a divine catering service for Elijah, the word of God is our supernatural food. Uh -huh. Hello, somebody. Uh -huh. uh, you, you think protein is your supernatural food? You think collagen is your supernatural food? You, you, you think uh, uh, beet juice is your supernatural food? Huh? You think uh, that vitamin is your supernatural food? Huh? God has some supernatural food, amen, and it gives strength to the believer. Amen. And so Elijah here uh, spent the night in the cave, and the word of the Lord came unto him and asked him, "What you doing here? <laughs> what in the what? You a prophet? Uh -huh. What you doing in a cave? Uh -huh. Huh? Listen, uh, you you a servant of the Most High God? What you doing high? Uh -huh. What you doing at home in your den? Uh -huh. What you doing in your lazy boy? Uh -huh. Help me, somebody in here." Huh? Well, you're in the wrong place doing the wrong thing. He said, so what are you doing here? Elijah told God that he had been zealous for the Lord, uh, for the children of Israel had forsaken the covenant of the Lord and had uh, torn down the altars and killed the prophets of the Lord and that he was the only one left, amen, and that the people were seeking to take his life. Listen, yeah. sometimes you can think in the service of the Lord that you're the only one left because yeah. everybody else went crazy. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, I, I'm the only one left trying to serve God. I'm the only one left. Huh? The choir started off with 40 members. Hey, I'm the only somebody left. Hmm? The usher board had 12 members. I'm the only somebody left. Huh? You setting yourself up for spiritual depression. That's what you setting yourself up for. Amen? And well, we might as well go ahead and fold. I just told you God don't accept resignation. Let me get out of here. Uh, so this, he told the Lord, I'm the only somebody left, and, and not only that, the people want to take my life, amen? Uh, the only reason that you left the choir is because you thought somebody in there wanted to take your life. Huh? They wanted to shut you down, stop you from singing, stop you from serving the Lord. Huh? So uh, that's, what, that's the excuse that Elijah gave God. So God told him to stand up on your feet. That's one thing. And having done all, stand. Yeah. So stand up on your feet, amen, and go and stand upon the mountain, Amen. Before the Lord and return the way you came. Yeah. That was his command to Elijah. You in the wrong place. Get up on your feet. Stand up. Depression will have you laying down. I can't. D depression will have you uh, talking about what you cannot do for God. Yeah. That's what depression does. Amen. Can't do this. Can't do that. So God says, stand up on your feet. Amen. Uh, and and, and, and uh, the Lord strengthened him. Amen. And told him now, I need you to go back uh, the way that you came. Uh, and, and, and while he was doing that, see, that's another issue. When you're working with God, you have to be obedient to God. Huh? If God tells you something to do, that means you need to move out. You don't have to have all the answers, but you got to move. Yeah. Amen? And, and so as, as Elijah went back, the, the scripture says that God uh, passed by. Uh, and then after he passed by, a great strong wind tore into the mountains. Huh? Uh, and then uh, broke uh, the rocks into pieces before the Lord. But the scripture said, uh, but the Lord was not in the wind. See, the Lord will show you some things, amen. And then another wind uh, called and an earthquake came, uh, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. Hmm? And, and then after that, uh, uh, there was a fire that came, huh? but the Lord wasn't in the fire either. Huh? Do you hear me, somebody? And then, uh, uh, then uh, there came a still, small voice. Yeah. Hmm? When Elijah heard it, he wrapped uh, his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. Well, at least he's moving. Right. Huh?
stood in the entrance of the cave. And then suddenly a voice came to him and said, what in the world are you doing here? Let me tell you something. There are Christians all over the land that are in the wrong place. They, 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 listen, when you leave the church, do you know where you go? There's only one place for you to go when you leave the church. Right back out into the world. That's the only place you can go. Huh? And that's where uh, he was. Amen. When Elijah heard the voice of God, he told him the same thing that he had told him before. Well, I'm not only somebody, and they want to kill me, and they've torn down your altars, Lord. They're doing this, and they're doing that. And I'm not only somebody left. That's what he told him. Amen. Uh, and the Lord had to tell him again, get up and go back to Damascus. Go back by the way of the wilderness in Damascus. And then when you get there, I want you to anoint Haziel uh, to be king over, over Syria. What God was telling Elijah is that your work is not finished yet. Amen. I have some work for you to do, and it's my plan that you're going to carry out because you're worried about you, the only somebody left, and everybody want to kill you. Yeah. So God said, go back the way you came. Amen. And then I got some folks I want you to anoint. Watch this right here. Uh, I, I got an army that you don't even know about. I want you to anoint. Uh, anoint uh, 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 Hazael, amen, a uh, king over Syria, and then anoint Jehu. Now, can I tell you a little bit about Jehu? Jehu was a bad boy. Yeah. Not, not, not only did he know how to handle a sword, but Jehu uh, carried some knives, you know. And, and, and if you got close enough to you, he'd cut you off of them, you know. <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of guy he was. <laughs> if you step too, if you stepped up on him too close, you get cut up, and somebody got to tell you you bleed. <laughs> and so go, uh, I want you to get Jehu, and I want you to anoint uh, Jehu as well, amen, because I'm going to use him uh, in the service of the Lord. He's supposed to be king over Israel, amen. And then Elijah was told to anoint Elisha, amen, as a prophet that would take his place. See, God already has somebody to take your place, yeah. huh? And, but they're not going to take your place until it's time. Do you hear me, somebody? Hmm? And, and, and Elijah will uh, begin. Uh, Elijah rather begin to make make excuses for being for for his spiritual depression. The reason that many believers have stopped worshiping and serving God is because many of them are spiritually depressed. And they don't know it. They, they, they feel, uh, ain't nothing wrong with me. So, babe, what's wrong with you? Ain't, ain't nothing wrong with you. What makes you think something wrong with me? Well, first of all, you're spiritually depressed. Because you're not where you should be. And you certainly are not serving God. Amen? And so that's a sign of spiritual depression. God also told uh, Elijah that um, he always has a plan for his people. When Elijah was spiritually depressed, God assured him uh, that he was not the only prophet left. Uh, we talked about in Sunday school. So God said, I got, I got 10,000 prophets that have never bowed their knee. Huh? And they've never kissed Baal. Uh, they've never committed any false worship. God always has somebody uh, to do his bidding. Amen. Uh, God said that I got 7,000 prophets in Israel which have never bowed to Baal and, and, and they have never kissed him. Amen. Yeah. God knew Elijah better than Elijah knew himself. Can I tell you, God knows you better than you know yourself? You can, t you can talk about I don't feel like it all day long. But when you don't feel like serving God, there's something wrong. And, there, and that's called spiritual depression. Yeah. Amen? And so he knew him better than he knew himself. And he knows us better than we know ourselves as well. The journey of life is too great for us. Hmm? Uh, and, and not only that, but we cannot be victorious in ourselves. This life that we live is too great to try to, to overcome it by yourself. You, you can't overcome it by yourself. There are too many obstacles. There are too many problems uh, in life, amen? And, and so it's too great for us to try to be victorious on our own. We need the strength of the word of God in our lives, amen? So the Lord provide, provides the word for us so that we can walk with him and for him. When God provides his word, he wants us to walk with him and for him, amen. And then it's, it's how you walk. The Bible said that we are to walk by faith, amen. And then we're to walk in love, amen. And then we're to walk cautiously, amen. And then we ought to be consistent in our walk, amen. And then we ought to be Christ-like in our spirit. A whole lot of, of the reason that we're depressed is, is, it has to do with how we walk. We're trying to walk on both sides of the street at the same time. <laughs> yeah. And you get tore up and messed up. Yeah. 
Because that, that, that does not work, amen? And so God's question to Elijah is the same question he's asking the spiritually depressed uh, saints today. Uh, what are you doing here? Elijah went from God's powerful prophet to a caveman. Huh? God's powerful servant to a caveman. Amen. Uh, spiritual depression can get a believer into the wrong place and out of the right place. The right place is the body of Christ. The wrong place is the world. Amen. And, and, and so the right place for a child of God is the church. Hmm? Now, nobody can hide in secret places where they think God can't find them. I don't care how far you live from the church. God knows where you live. Yeah. Hmm? I don't care if you got a safe room in the house. You think can't nobody go in there but you hear me in there as well. Yeah. Amen? And so uh, you're not going to be able to hide uh, from God. Amen? Now, uh, other people have tried to hide from God. I'm going to call it roll and then I'm going to leave you alone. You remember a man by the name of John. I got to get out of here and leave you alone. God told Jonah, I need you to go down, go to Nineveh. Huh? Jonah turned around and got on his ship and went to Tarshish. <laughs> I got to get out of here. Well, any time that you uh, go in the opposite direction that God has told you to go, I need you to understand that that's a downward spiral. Yeah. Yeah. Because Jonah went down to the ticket office <laughs> and paid his fare to go in the wrong direction. And then Jonah went down in the ship. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And when he got down in the ship, Jonah went to sleep. Yeah. Do you hear me somehow? Out of the will of God, out of order, but can I tell you that God knew where Jonah was? And guess what? God sent a storm. God will send a storm in life. As a matter of fact, he'll send a storm just to get your attention. Jonah was on a ship going in the wrong direction, and a storm broke out, and the captain uh, started telling the men, the storm is so bad, we got to throw some stuff overboard. Yeah. Huh? They start throwing food overboard, medicine overboard. Uh -huh. huh? And one of the men came and told the captain, said, sir, we got a man down in the hull of the ship, sleep. Yeah. Hmm? Wake him up, and bring him up here to me. Yeah. When he woke Jonah up, and, to, and, and took Jonah on top side. The captain of the ship asked Jonah, what is your name? <laughs> My name is Jonah. Wh what is your occupation? I'm a prophet. Well, what you doing on this ship? Mister, uh -huh. I'm on the wrong ship, yeah. going in the wrong direction. Uh -huh. hmm? Well, I tell you what you want to, I tell you what y'all do to, to ease this storm. Stop throwing stuff overboard and throw me overboard yeah. because I am the cause of the trouble. Huh? They threw Jonah overboard and instantly the storm stopped, but God had a fish that he had prepared for Jonah. Do you hear me, somebody? So Jonah went down to the ticket office. He went down in the hull of the ship and he went down in the belly of the whale. Do you hear me? And then the whale took him down in the deep blue sea. <laughs> I'm trying to leave you alone in here. Huh? But Jonah thought he was in the hideout. <laughs> and so God knows how to find us. Well, I'm going to call one more roll. I'm going to get out of your way. But uh, uh, you know the story about Prodigal, don't you? Yeah. 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 Uh, Prodigal decided that uh, he didn't want to follow the rules and he wanted everything that uh, belonged to him and that came to him because he was going to take his inheritance, talk to me somebody, and then he was going to go into a far country, amen. Uh, he, he was going to rear back, amen. He was going to enjoy life. He was tired of the rules and the regulations at home. But can I tell you, what he asked for was not his, it belonged to his father. Mm -hmm. And so you know the story, don't you? And so what I'm trying to tell you here as I get ready to take my seat that is that uh, there are many prodigal folks in the church. Do you hear me somebody? Well, you got some prodigal usher board members. I'm not asking anybody. I'm just saying what I'm saying. 
You got some prodigal deacon board members. Can I preach in here? Hmm? You, you, you got some prodigal choir members, huh? Uh, they, they decided that since they couldn't run it the way they want to run it and they couldn't have their way, that they were going to take their ball and go home. Yeah. Yeah. You know the story, don't you? He went away into the far country. And you know what? Everything was fine as long as uh, he had his daddy's money. Oh, yeah. Everything was fine uh, when he could continue to buy setups for everybody. You know. yeah. uh, but but, but uh, by and by after a while, the record is that uh, he squandered everything that he had. And, and, and the Bible said he, he began to be in want. Yeah. See, God knows how to operate, huh? Yeah. And not only that, but he was a Jewish boy. And, and, and so he began to be in one, and so he hired himself out, feeding hogs in a hog pen, yeah. just as out of all as he could be, amen, breaking all kind of laws, amen, and not only that, but the scripture said got so bad, yeah. huh? until uh, as he began to look at the hogs eating slop, yeah. as he began to see the slop running out of the hogs mouth. I got to get out of here and leave you alone. But as he began to look at the hogs chewing the husk and, and all of the slop, the Bible said that his mouth began to walk. And he, and he almost began to eat the slop of the hog. But then there's another thing happened. While he was spiritually depressed, he sat down. He said, I believe that I will arise and go home. And what that meant was that he was not at himself. Amen. And so he got up and began to make his way home. And you know the story, don't you? Every since the day the boy left, his father would come to the edge of the house and look down the crooked road. Just looking for his son. And all of a sudden, one day, he went out and he looked down the road. And he seen somebody coming. And all he could tell was that, 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 that the person that was coming, that he walked like his son. I'm going to get out of here and leave you alone. As the boy got closer to the house, he began to look at his head. And his head looked like his daddy's head. And so all of a sudden, the father lighted off the porch and took off running. And when the boy saw his father, the boy started running. And they, when they got together, the Bible said his daddy fell on his neck and kissed him. I got to get out of the way here and leave you alone. All I'm trying to tell you is that when the boy came home, his father called a meeting. We got to have a party. We got to have a feast. Because my boy that was lost, he's found now, and he's back at home. All I need you to do is kill a fatty cat and get everything ready. Get me a raw robe. Bring my jewelry box. I got a necklace that I want to put around my boy's neck. And then bring my ring box. I got some rings that I want to put on his finger because I'm going to reference him back home to me and all of a sudden there was a big party because the boy had came home well I'm gonna leave you alone here and all I'm trying to tell you is that we've got to be careful that we don't fall in spirit into spiritual depression and to keep from falling in spiritual depression you've got to go back the way that you came I don't know about you but when I came to the Lord I was weary, I was wounded, and I was sad, but I found in him a resting place, and he has made my soul glad. All I'm trying to tell you is sometimes in order to get right, you got to turn around and go back the way you came. You don't want to leave you alone here, because somebody has forgot the way that they came when they got down on Broadway. There were a whole lot of lights on Broadway, a whole lot of noise on Broadway, bright lights, big city, everything jumping, and so you can forget the way that you came, and so I want to reach in to the word of God and help you to come back.
back or to be able to go back the way that you came. You remember Jesus, Mary's baby, left it on record that if you ever get lost, I'll show you how to get found. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man can come to the Father but by me. And so if you get lost, all you got to do is turn around and walk in the way. Turn around and walk in the truth. Turn around if you're in darkness. Look for the light and then just walk to the light. I got to leave you alone, but I dare not tell you about a hill called Calvary. Is there anybody in here that know about Calvary? It was on Calvary that Jesus, Mary's baby, and God's son. It was on Calvary that Ezekiel's wheel in the middle of the wheel. It was on Calvary. It was flown line in his hand. It was on Calvary that Jesus suffered blood and then he died. It was on Calvary that they took his clothes off. It was on Calvary that they put a thorn or crowns on his head. It was on Calvary. I got to get out of here and leave you alone. He was a king and should have had a crown. But they got some they got some thorns and some thistles. And then they had a vote. I got to get out of here and leave you alone. They began to vote. And they began to plant a crown. And in that crown, it was a crown of thorns. And there were 72 thorns in the crown. Because when they voted, there were 72 members of the Sanhedrin. And so when they voted to put in the death, it was an unanimous decision. Oh, yes. We're going to put in the death. They took the crown and shoved it down on a holy head. When they shoved it down, they pierced his brow. Blood came streaming down. Blood for the remission of sin. The Bible said that Jesus hung his head in the locks of his shoulder and gave up the ghost. They took it down and laid him in a Bible tomb. Three days and three nights as Jonah was in the belly of the whale. Three days and three nights. But early on the third day, anybody here know about the third day? If you can hold out by and by, after a while, on the third day, he got up with all power and heaven and earth. It is from the hand. I somebody tell somebody if you made some mistakes, if you went down the wrong road, all you got to do is turn around and go back the way that you came. And if you go back the way that you came, I somebody tell you you will run in to Jesus. He'll be standing down with his arms open, tears in his eyes. I'm so Glad that you made it back. A whole lot of people have walked away from the Lord. They've been spiritually depressed and they've never been able to make it back. They wanted to come back. They tried to come back. And sometimes shame will make you too proud to come back. But you ought to turn around and come back. The Lord asked Elijah one question. All I want to know is what you're doing here. You out of place. You a son of the Most High. You a daughter of the Most High. What are you doing hiding in a cave? We got a whole lot of folk. The reason that when you call them, they can't answer the phone. You don't hear me. We modern now. We got new technology. When the phone rings, they got a call. ID. See your name on the phone. I don't want to be bothered. I ain't going to answer the phone. But I saw somebody tell you that Jesus is still calling. He's still calling today. I heard the songwriter say softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. What is he calling? 
Come home, you who are weary and worn. Come home, see on the portal, he's calling, calling for you and for me. Turn around and come back. Don't let pride put you in the ground. Huh? No, don't let pride put you in the ground. Huh? You worry about what folks got to say. First of all, they, they don't have a hell in the hell to put you in. And I told you, the only way you're going to escape Satan is to go to hell. Huh? So what you doing here? How, how did you end up in a cave? You started out good with me. You were running right along with me. You was at Sunday school. You was at Bible study. Huh? Every Sunday you was at church. All of a sudden. You in my head. And you talking about what folks want to say. What folks want to do to you. Let me tell you something. God is the one that has life and death in his hand. Huh? And he can get some folks up off you. But, you, but the, what you have to do first is you got to stand up. Isn't that what he told Elijah? Yes. I'm going to leave y'all alone in here. You, you are estranged from God. You spiritually depressed. Watch this. <clears throat> but God still lets you eat his bread. You spiritually depressed. But God still quench your thirst with his water. You don't hear me yet, do you? <clears throat> Oh, hell breaking loose all around you. Huh? Mountains flitting open and everything. But God's still making a way for you. Hmm? Do you hear me, somebody? And, and, and still, we still can't hear his voice. I got to church here this morning, and, and I was unlocking the door. I went back there to the prettiest uh, 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 cardinal was sitting out there, just sitting there, just looking as pretty as he wanted to be. Oh my lord, I just had to, I just stood there and looked. He just pretty he looked like he was modeling. He was just turned on around. Just turned on. I said, look, look at God. Just yeah. pretty look, had on his red vest and everything. <laughs> I'm gonna leave y'all alone. I'm just trying to show you the glory of God. Amen. That's all I'm trying to tell you. But come back the way you came. Please, please come back the way you came before it's too late. Don't, don't get caught where you can't get back, amen. As long as you have breath in your body, as long as you can move and breathe, you have opportunity. Mm? But you see, you can get caught out there and the Lord can call your number. Mm? And you won't be able to make it back. That's all I'm trying to tell you. Uh, go back the way that you came, amen. God bless you. Go to the church is open. I hope you got something out of the message today, amen. The door of the church is open for the reception of members.